Ça marche toujours. Nous voilà de retour pour la dernière conférence de la matinée. Il y a beaucoup moins de monde. Le sujet est plus compliqué. Je crois que la conférence se fera en anglais. Voilà. Merci. Yeah. Hi. So um, I'm Dirk and uh, I'm uh, one of the developers of the uh, build system Escons. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for allowing me to give this talk here today. And uh, second, just a warning, so um, I have a lot of slides and uh, I kind of have to blow through this a little bit. So, um, but uh, you can get the slides afterwards and look at them just for yourself. So they are in the public repository. Uh, and also, I'm sorry, I give this talk in English completely. Um, parce que mon français c'est pas bien. Je suis très désolé. So, um, yeah, let's just start. And uh, what will happen now is that I will try to give a short introduction to ESCONS, just some, some basic information for you to better understand uh, um, what kind of problem we had. And then I will also talk a little bit about the kind of analysis that we've done to solve it and finally some results and uh, then also the solution that we currently have uh, worked out for this. So ESCONS, it's a build system, so we build stuff, right? So here you have a simple example. You have like these two uh, files at the top. This is just plain CPP files and uh, a source file and a header. And then below that, you see this blue snippet that's an S construct. And this is for us, these are the kind of make files, so the build description files. And um, now within this S construct, you see this, these uh, commands. Uh, we create an environment, and then we tell this environment, look, here's the CPP file, and I want to build a program from this. And um, at the bottom, you can see how these files all are together in one directory. So um, then you just call scons in the command line, and it will start the C compiler or the C++ compiler, and then also the link stage. So it just finds the compiler that you have installed, right? And um, this, uh, these S constructs, or sometimes they are also called S conscripts, uh, they are Python files actually, so Python scripts, so you can just import modules, do loops, whatever you, you need to do for your build process, so it's very flexible. And um, SCONS itself is also, of course, written completely in Python. Um, now, if you call SCONS a second time, it will say uh, it's everything up to date, you didn't change anything. Um, and then I uh, here edit the uh, header and just enter a comment for the C++ file. And then ESCONS will see, yeah, okay, the C++ file changed, but um, now when you look at this, the link stage is missing, and that happens because ESCONS is based on content uh, detection, so content-based uh, change detection. So we use MD5 hash sums uh, as a default to uh, detect whether a file actually has changed. So it detects, yeah, okay, the C file changed, or the C++ file changed, but um, the resulting object file is the same as before. So it just skips the final link step because the uh, outcome would be the same. So right, you, if you use the same object file with the same settings, you get the same executable. And uh, so you really have to, to add a new function uh, like it's displayed at the bottom. And um, there you can see how then, if you really add a new function or something that really changes the object file, the uh, main program will get relinked. And uh, here you can see the dependencies that SCONS detects automatically. So you see that it includes the uh, foo.h header, although we didn't tell it that this is a dependency. So it just goes ahead and scans the C++ file and then detects this, uh, this for itself. And uh, this is also a very, very nice feature. So um, these environments, they are very important uh, for us because they kind of like define how files are built. And you can see here that it's basically you can treat it like some sort of dictionary. So this is where all the variables for the build are stored. Like here, for example, the name of the compiler to use, right? At the top, I just say, okay, 
uh, initialize an environment, so it will find a compiler for me, and then in the next step, in the next line, I just overwrite the setting with my own compiler, and from then on, it will use this my GCC compiler instead whenever it builds a program, for example. Um, we do not only do uh, C++, we do lots of other languages. Here is a short LaTeX example. So you can see at the top, again, the environment gets initialized, and then um, you see I just put a tech file in there and some EPS files, and at the bottom you see the output. So there it just goes ahead and calls PDF LaTeX and whatever is needed uh, to get the final PDF as output. And uh, here you can see the dependencies that SCONS detected automatically. So you can see that there is a bibliography file used and the images and also some chapter files are included, which I didn't specify. So it all finds this by itself, right? So this is really very, very convenient. And um, in this kind of fashion, we support a variety of different languages and uh, frameworks or whatever you might want to call them. So you see like Fortran D and some Qt4, Qt5 in their docbook um, and whatever. So 